Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Farlands or Bust. Woof indeed, Wolfie, woof indeed. You got the, the double the double woofs going on there, but welcome back to Farlands or Bust, episode 494, Saturday, August 15th, 2015. And here we are, not catching fire, because we put out most of the lava here in the the lava, the internally, naturally heated... Heidi Hole of the previous episode. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. That, the good times were had then. Good times were had. Let's put down another torch just in case. The reason we like to light things up in the Heidi Holes is just in case. Just in case we do die when we spawn back in the Heidi Hole, there isn't some sort of creeper or something waiting for us. Which I'm not sure if that happens or not because the chunk wouldn't be loaded or whatever, but uh, that's why we close off the Heidi Hole. That's why we illuminate the hidey hole and it's a foggy foggy morning here in far lands or bust that's because i accidentally hit the f key at the end of the last episode there we go i i can see clearer now the rain is gone the fog is gone the fog distance is further back and we are going to continue in a westward direction uh actually we need some wooden planks so we're going to not continue quite yet until we uh, achieve some some resources that we we doth require for the journey, and we're going to continue uh, raising money for Child's Play Charity, or we have continued raising money for Child's Play Charity. Started with a fresh Child's Play Charity fundraiser widget goal of sixty thousand dollars for conveniently season six. Farlandsabus.com. You will see that we are up to two hundred and ninety-six dollars. Two hundred ninety-six dollars for Child's Play Charity. Now I know. That is, uh, that is a, a small number compared to the, the very large goal and, and lofty goal that we've set forth, but $296 can buy a lot of things for kids in hospitals around the world. You know, they use them, sure, it could buy, like, one Wii or, or, or Xbox or, or something, maybe, I don't know. Uh, or it could buy a bunch of games, a bunch of games or books. It could buy a bunch of mobile app games. Uh, that's one of the things that... I do remember from from speaking with uh, the Penny Arcade, or I'm sorry, not the Penny Arcade people, the uh, Child's Play Charity people, uh, about what the money goes toward, is that a lot of these uh, hospitals and places use this for a lot of iPads, tablets, mobile apps. They're just a lot easier and, and mobile to, say, hand around to the different... To the different something that these kids could have in, in their actual hospital rooms as opposed to needing a, a very specific, say, gaming uh, room or playroom for, for the kids with uh, consoles that can only be used one at a time or something like that. There's, you know, these, these mobile games that could have a bunch of different apps on them and uh, that's... That's that's kind of a, a very popular thing amongst amongst the hospitals that that take advantage of the Child's Play charity uh, service, charity, charity, the Child's Play charity, charity. <laughs> do, do I stutter? Um, so yeah, that, that could get a lot of stuff. So worry not, my friends, worry not. The, 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 the goal is, is lofty, but so is the journey to the Far Lands, is it not? It is indeed. It is indeed. And we're actually, speaking of the lofty goal, we're, we're into our second week. Because uh, season six started last Saturday, and this is the the, the following Saturday, <laughs> is it? Is it not? It's a little bit confusing. I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a behind the scenes here. Uh, it I'm having for the first uh, five seasons tried to record, render, and upload and publish videos the day of. Uh, it's kind of thrown me for a little bit of a loop. I'm. I'm it's kind of confusing because I had like say yesterday. Yesterday to me now, yesterday I had a video go up of Far Lands a Bust, so it's kind of like, yay, Far Lands a Bust is up, I don't really have to worry about, no, wait, <laughs> I still have to record the episode a day early for the following episode, so I'm still, I'm still uh, acclimating to the pressure, <laughs> uh, the pressurization of, of this current schedule, but I think it's working out, I think it's working out great, I like, uh, you know, one of the things... One of the most common answers you'll get from YouTubers by, you know, people asking, oh, how do you become, how do you become successful? Or how do you, uh, how do you entice, entice? That's not the word I'm looking for. How do you encourage uh, viewers to come back and, and uh, get new viewers and, uh, you know, be good at the YouTube thing and consistency and, 
uh, have people being able to expect when a series is going to go up. Uh, and, and to keep to that specific schedule is, is something that a lot of people say, and this <laughs> this is the first time I've been able to do that, so hopefully we can keep it up into the second week here of Season 6 of Far Lines Are Bust. These are very, these are very, uh, big, big goals of mine <laughs> to keep consistent with the schedule and whatnot. It has kind of, I'm afraid, it has kind of messed with the schedule on other videos. Uh, I did forget today is Friday. I normally have Kerbal Space Program go up on Friday. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. So that'll go up on uh, probably Sunday, tomorrow, the next episode of Kerbal Space Program. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about that. But like I said, things are equalizing. The pressures are coming down. The, the things are mixing and mingling properly. We just got to let the waters subside and, and we'll be all right. Everything will be all right. Right, right Minecraft music in the background. Now that's something I forgot in the first episode. I accidentally had the, the music disabled because I had it disabled for uh, Flabathon because I think we had our own music going on in the background. But uh, it's back now. It's back. It should it should provide some smooth listening in the background. It's also kind of weird. I'm still... I know I shouldn't. I shouldn't commentate differently just because I know that there is a separate podcast edition, which people... I'm, I'm getting a lot of good response. Uh, people, uh, why didn't I do this sooner? You guys should have suggested it. No, uh, getting a lot of good response for the podcast edition, so I'm glad that's a thing that uh, we're doing now. It seems to have uh, be serving its purpose. But I'm trying not to uh, trying not to let that affect how I record. Primarily for the YouTube's, obviously, is the main uh, my main squeeze here is my main uh, my main platform. But it's kind of difficult, like yesterday when I saw the, uh, the obelisk, Ibelosk, Idolon, Idolon, Odolon, uh, I like tried to describe it, but I'm like, I really shouldn't take extra time to describe things, uh, with the podcast people in mind. No offense, podcast people. Hello, I love you, but it, it, it is primarily for the YouTubes, a visual medium, the the audio version is, is simply a, a courtesy a courtesy from Kurt J Mac. Put that on a T-shirt. Indeed, indeed. What isn't what isn't a courtesy is uh, airport security. <laughs> What's the deal with airport security? I'm gonna start doing uh, observational comedy next. Stand up. Uh, no, but I, I do want to take a moment here. I've been answering a lot of questions from fans. Oh, God, I thought that was Wolfie. I'm like, Wolfie, you look so pink today. No, no, that's a pig. Ah, careful, Wolfie. Glitching in the leaves. Get murdered, pig. All right, I guess I'll just... I'll have to do my own dirty work. Yeah, I do need some food for Wolfie. Uh, but I wanted to mention something. Another another news item. This is, this is an adult topic. Well, no, not that maybe I should... Phrasing! This is a... One of these times... I'm going to mention something in the news. Uh, I don't think it should be controversial. There's always a few people who pop up in, in, in the comments or elsewhere who come to the defense of, of the TSA or invasions of privacy in the name of security or, or all this stuff. And I, I, that it boggles my mind. My mind is boggled. Like the game Boggle. You just drop the pieces on the floor and it breaks open and it, my, my mind is boggled like a broken game of Boggle. Uh, but in the news, while we were on break, back in June, a uh, an article was published uh, based on the performance of the TSA, the Transportation Security Agency, uh, at least here in the United States. The, the folks who uh, like to put digital scanners on your uh, your wait time on your uh, you know when you're going through airport security and they can see you naked and stuff like that uh, you know all that fun stuff there's actually today earlier there was a story the reason I remember this is there was a story about Midway Airport my old stomping ground in Chicago uh, the TSA lines are ridiculous like out the door like waiting for hours just to get through checkpoints of security and TSA is blaming Southwest Airlines for selling too many tickets? Why is that a problem? <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem. That's their job, is to sell out their airplanes. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they always have like four out of the 12 lanes open, uh, is what most uh, people are reporting. But anyway, that's what brought it up. But back in June, uh, back in June, there was a study that said the TSA failed, get this, failed to find 95% 
of tests. Oh, dang, Wolfie, I guess I'm getting out of the boat here. 95% of security tests conducted by Homeland Security. Basically, Homeland Security is the, the agency, the parent agency of the TSA, and they have agents who randomly go through and, and try to uh, get a, like, fake gun or, or a bomb or something through security. They failed to find those items 95% of the time. 95! 95% of the time. Those items got on board planes. So let's talk about that ridiculousness and other things in the morning. <laughs> and awakeness. And awakeness. Right, Wolfie? It's ridiculous. But anyway, 95%. Uh, from that, uh, the fallout from that, which is minimal at best, uh, the top TSA administrator, Melvin Carraway, resigned, as you apparently do. He was he was reassigned somewhere within somewhere else within the Department of Homeland Security. Don't worry, he still has a job. Uh, but he resigned, but not before uh, immediately enacting, uh, implementing a series of actions within the TSA, uh, several of which uh, address the issues raised in that report by revising protocol, ret retraining staff and retesting airport screening equipment uh, and, and conducting more random tests at checkpoints. Uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, but here's here's my two cents on, on the whole uh, situation. They failed 95% of the test threats. Let's call them test threats. 95% of them went through airport security. So from that, could we not extrapolate that 95% of actual threats also got through airport security. And still, even though 95% of actual threats made it onto planes uh, within our skies, there has been no disaster, no no terrorist attack on, on airplanes in the United States since 9-11. I, that doesn't mean you should retrain staff and redouble your efforts. It means that you are useless. <laughs> you are not needed anymore, good sir. We could let that extra 5% through, uh, even though that wouldn't be the case. Whoa, we got skeletons. Speaking of speaking of threats, here's a real threat. Are you going to miss me with 95% of your arrows? Oh, nope, nope, nope. Actually, that would... Uh, get him down, Wolfie. Murder. Good job. He did miss me with 95% of his arrows. Only one arrow got through, and we're still fine. The, my my armor is not needed. No, the TSA is not needed. That's that's what I am uh, gathering from this situation, but uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. They have they have budgets to uphold. They have they have uh, corporations that have contracts that need to lobby to continue or increase those contracts, uh, even if those. Those, uh, those scanners, those porno scanners, as they're so affectionately called, that, that see travelers naked in order to see what's underneath their clothes, uh, those are all in storage. They still paid for them, like $150 million or something crazy like that. They still paid for them, but they're all in storage because they were proved to be completely pointless and useless. The company still made that money. Uh, no, your point, you don't, you're not needed anymore, I'm afraid. Uh, we can go back to the pre-9-11 days when the airports and the airlines provided their own security. Uh, and, and, and we can go about our business without having lines out the door and, uh, you know, without being restricted about taking off our shoes and having minimal liquids and, and having, you know, grandmas being patted down and lifted out of their, their wheelchairs and just... Uh, ri ridiculousness like that. It's it's just ridiculousness, I say. Um, so that's uh, <laughs> that's so frustrating. But nobody's nobody's suggesting that. Why would anybody suggest that? It's it's the TSA. It's it's the world we live in now. No, no, it's the world you forced upon us, my friend. <sighs> so that's just something that I saw in the news, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? I mean, I knew, I knew that was kind of the case. Everybody knew that was the case. That they were, it's, it's security theater, as, as it's known. It's, it's there to give you the impression, the illusion that you're, you're, you're safer, but you're, you're either not really, or it's either not really, as we're finding out, 95%. It's not really necessary at all. So maybe take that. 
$7.39 billion budget for the TSA and, and give that to NASA. That's half of their yearly budget. NASA's budget is uh, 17, 17 billion and dwindling. Uh, give that to NASA. We could, we could have, with that money, we could have boots on, boots on the ground on Mars uh, in the next 10 years or something like that. Come on now. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, <laughs> that's just, that's, that, there's a little, uh, that's a podcast topic for you to be had. If only I had some sort of like, and now I'll be bringing in, uh, security experts and, uh, government, governmental oversight critic, Wolfie McWolfington Esquire the Third Jr., uh, on, on, onto the show here to talk about uh, what exactly the implications this means for the future of, of uh, airline travel and etc uh, etc. Et <laughs> uh, but no, we're we're not going to do that. We're 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 not professionals at all. Oh man! But anyway, that's I just wanted to bring that up. That's crazy because nobody's talking about it anymore. It was just kind of like Meh. <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah. So let's actually speaking of let's moving on. Continuing on. <laughs> Um, we have uh, more questions here from uh, donors. Child's Play Charity donations uh, have come in, and, and with those questions come in that I try to answer, uh, you can always do that at farlinesofbus.com. Ask questions, suggest topics such as that. Somebody could have suggested my thoughts on the TSA or whatever, but uh, I, I brought it. You will have those thoughts wheeled upon you regardless of whether or not you ask for them. But we're going to... Ooh, I hear liquid. Are you going to ant- uh, not liquids! Are they in bottles that are three ounces or less? If not, I will shake my fist at you! Uh, we have a question from Square Goldfish. What manner of hiking boot do you wear when adventuring? I, up until recently, was was only in possession of hiking shoes. That is to say, uh, ones that do not have the, the ankle support. Uh, I had moderately heavy duty ish hiking shoes i get all my stuff i've mentioned this before i get all i get all my stuff all, all the good stuff comes from uh, sierra trading com. sponsor not really this is an interesting little it's like a sinkhole uh, over here yep that's pretty much what it looks like all right continuing on Sierra Trading Post, uh, it's kind of like a discount clearance site. I actually just recently learned they're actually owned by the same company that owns TJ Maxx and and Marshalls. I think those are both the same company, am I right? Uh, Which are in and of themselves stores that that have like discount clearance seconds and and stuff from from companies. Uh, But Sierra Trading Post is where I get most all of my adventuring, my hiking, my, my outdoorsy equipment and clothing. So yeah, I have uh, a pair of boots, or not boots, uh, hiking shoes from Keen? Or no, one of, no, I have really light, they're called approach shoes. They're really light, not really grippy or anything like that, but I I got them for like traveling if I was going to go hiking or something like that, and they're really cool. Uh, But those are Keen. What are my other ones? I'm not exactly sure what my other ones are. Uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. I'm terrible at this. I should have written this down. Uh, but I have two shoes. But I almost, I, I recently, only a couple months ago, got an actual pair of hiking boots. And uh, Square Goldfish goes on to ask, are they old school leather ones or the fabric ones with, with the Gore-Tex and the breathableness and the Glaven Glaven hiking boots? That's literally what he wrote down. He or she wrote down. Square Goldfish. And uh, I, I like the leather ones for, like, the looks. Uh, but I, and I've tried a few. Sierra Trading Post has a very, uh, liberal return policy, so I've tried a few, but I have not enjoyed them. They're just a bit too, a bit too heavy, and, uh, uh, they're kind of a lot for more, like, backpacking and, and, and more than simple day hikes. All I go on is day hikes. I'm not carrying around 50 pounds on my back or anything like that. Uh, but I recently did get, uh, a pair of, of hiking boots that are by the same company as my hiking shoes. I forgot. Are they Keen? I can't... Keen, K-E-E-N, uh, are, are, are one of the, the companies uh, that I've bought from, that I've, I've been happy with. Uh, but anyway, they're they're not Gore-Tex, they're not waterproof. I opted for non-waterproof ones, because uh, I'll be hiking in more hotter climates, and uh, when you do have waterproof boots, they don't breathe, because <laughs> they're waterproof, so your, your feet get all sweaty and swampy. Uh, so I went with... Uh, they're, they're still pretty lightweight, but... 
it, the difference is night and day. I don't know why I waited so long to get hiking boots. Because the, the ankle support, it's weird at first with the ankle support. Because uh, you're starting to, you, you, you know, you use a whole bunch of different muscles because you can no longer really bend your ankles while you're hiking. Uh, so you end up using more of your, your your thighs and your knees and your calves to to articulate your 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 feet and uh, you know your steps and whatnot. So at first it's a little bit different, uh, but once you get whoa that's some lava. Once you get used to it, uh, it's actually a lot better and a lot more stable. I would often uh, with the hiking shoes, uh, pretty much every hike I'd find a way to roll my ankle. Uh, never got any sort of serious injury from it, but it always you know you step on a a rock you don't see wrong, or a rock moves, and you're like, huh, whoa, hello, we're all right. <laughs> but uh, but now with the the hiking boots, uh, I feel like I could uh, do not only a lot more rougher terrain, but I could go for I could uh, got more stamina. I can go for longer uh, without needing to worry about my my ankle fidelity. Uh, so yeah, I would uh, you know they're they're lightweight, they're non waterproof, uh, they got nice grippy. I always try to find one with. Uh, all of mine have the Vibram sole, which is a brand of, of sole, the rubber, I don't, I'm not sure what it is specifically. They've got some sort of trademark on, on the type of tread or, or grip rubber grip underneath or, or something like that. Uh, also get one with uh, either a steel or nylon shank. Uh, it's basically a, a hard piece that... Uh, is in the, the footbed that prevents you from, you know, feeling all the rocks and sharp objects and keeping your, your footbed stable and flat as well. That's that's always a good thing to look for in a, in a hiking shoe slash boot situation, footwear. Uh, but speaking of hiking boots, uh, in episode 500, we're, we're waiting to craft our own diamond, diamond shank <laughs> hiking boots uh, from these four diamonds that we have from episode 400. So let's... Let's go to sleep, and we'll get closer to doing that in the morning. And awakeness. Right, Wolfie? Uh, let's... Oh, I didn't get any treats from any of those pigs that I killed back there. That was pointless. Um, but yeah, hiking boots I, I, I doth enjoy. And... Uh, yeah, I need to get out hiking more. I've always... I've kind of... Where I... I have not disclosed, but where I live now, I've... Ooh, that's a creeper. I've, uh... wanted to, but not had the fortitude to. I'm like, I should... Oh, God! Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> We're just gonna keep walking. I got stuck. See, here I am. I'm trying to explain things for the podcast viewers. I got stuck on that block, and I, I missed my jump. And, uh... That was when the creeper had a moment to sizzle behind me. Simmer down there, creeper! What was I saying? I was saying something. Oh, I, I like. I feel like I want to like be more outdoorsy and energetic, and I kind of want to be like I'll wake up at five or six a.m. every morning, uh, go to my favorite hiking place, and and do a a quick loop around around the mountain, and then that'll be like my workout for the day, and then I'll begin to start my day at like eight a.m. when I get back or whatever. But uh, that's not happened. That is <laughs> that is simply a pipe dream. Yeah, I could be one of those outdoorsy types. Or I can sleep in till nine. <laughs> oh man, I'm a terrible human being. Perhaps, maybe, maybe when the temperature is cool a bit, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll try to encourage myself to do something like that. But anyway, uh, Square Goldfish uh, follows up with a yet another, with a yet another spicy meatball, with a yet another uh, hiking-related question. Do you use or have you used walking hiking poles, trekking poles? Are they of any use? Uh, yes, actually, they are of, of use. Uh, and that's another thing, if you're not used to hiking with hiking poles, I have a few pairs, again, from Sierra Trading Post. Uh, if you're not used to it, it takes some time to get used to it, because when you first start using trekking poles, you start to notice, you, you actually might start to get tired sooner, and that's simply because you're using different muscles. You're, you're starting to use your, your upper body, your, your arms, your shoulders, your back, to hike as opposed to just your legs so suddenly you're getting kind of a whole all your muscles are, are awakened and that can kind of throw you for a loop but once you get used to it they are pretty helpful uh, and it does relieve some of the the work on your your knees and ankles and your legs and and whatnot uh, i find them to be most helpful when going downhill 
because they kind of act as like a railing you can put your weight on uh, to get yourself stable. Um, but they help in both ways, going up and down. It's just, uh, in certain situations, uh, if you end up having to like scramble up some rocks, they can be a little bit in the way, but that's why you can have a backpack that you can hopefully strap them to when, when not needed. Uh, the hiking poles I'm talking about. And, uh, but otherwise I don't get the, that too into it. Sometimes I'll just go with one, a single hiking pole. Uh, but then sometimes if the hike ends up being longer than I anticipate, then I'll start to feel it and one of my shoulders will be all lopsided, so... Careful Wolfie, did I just hear him take damage? But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's how that cookie grumbles. Hiking tips with Gertie Mac. Ah, <laughs> uh, we have, whoa, we have a question here from Kevin H. You've mentioned Mystery Science Theater 3000 before. Were you a fan of the series? And if so, what was your favorite episode? Uh, I, I was a fan of the series, not like a super fan or anything like that. I didn't see all the series. I, I watched a few that were on Netflix and stuff like that. And, and growing up, uh, saw a few when they were on Comedy Central. Uh, favorite episode? I, I can't... I can't put it together. Uh, there was that there was that one weird episode where they watched the movie and it was like some weird Dutch or some foreign like Christmas thing with Santa or something but the Santa was fighting aliens or something. I can't remember that I just found to be hilarious I don't remember what that was all about uh, but you know I don't remember any specific uh, specific uh, episodes of specificity other than that one off the top of my head. Uh, the Gamera, the Gamera episodes. <laughs> um, hmm. Good times, good times were had. But yeah, it was pretty good. And uh, and no, everybody says, oh, if you like that, you should watch, uh, or you should uh, get into riff tracks and stuff like that. But no, I haven't. I, I see, always see people talking about that and, and saying to, to watch movies with the riff tracks or whatever, but I've never... No, never done such a thing. Never, uh, never got around to that. But I do know they exist. Thank you very much for reminding me. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Whoops. Speaking of the creepers sizzling behind me, if you could give the creeper species a scientific name, what would it be? Question from Sean. Well, thanks for your donation, Sean. And the question, I don't know. You're talking about like the Latin. Well, they're they're they they are a descendant of uh, a variation, a mutation of pig. So it would be something because that's for those of you who don't know. Uh, the story is the story goes. Gather around, children. The story goes that Notch was attempting to uh, render or or design a pig, and he got the, the the body block measurements wrong, and instead of being horizontal. Like a pig, the, he got it vertical and, and ended up making a creeper. Uh, so he ended up deciding to keep that model and adding it to the game. Uh, so, so it is it is a, a mutation on the pig genome. So it, it would be something Swinicus Explodicus or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but then again, they're also like referenced to look like bushes. They're like a a hybrid plant bush pig creature. <laughs> With with explosive properties, Swi Swinicus, I Explodicus Maximus, De los Muertos. There's some Spanish in there for some reason. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'll go with that. Simply that was my first instinct. Speaking of uh, Latin names, <laughs> Dravir Sylvanus <laughs> comes back at us again. <laughs> with a question and a donation. Bloop! Excuse me, excuse me, dear sheep. I need pigs, speaking of Swinicus Explodicuses. I need Swinicus Pink, Pink, not Explodicus. Um, ask question, how many questions are in your backlog, aka your notepad text file? Uh, well, let's see, I've got two recent ones from the current season, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six from the previous season. Those six, I'm afraid, are all of the same topic about my move and where I've moved to and what I think of moving and renting versus buying and, and all that stuff. 
but I'm holding those off until I until I reveal the Wu-Tang secret. No, until I reveal the location of where I've moved, which will be soon. Like I said a few episodes ago, I got one of these uh, knockoff GoPros <laughs> from Mono Price, and uh, I, I would like to attach it to my vehicle. Uh, drive somewhere interesting to show show off the new the new uh, the new biome <laughs> and and then do some sort of post commentary vlog and upload that to the curtain deed channel uh, and we could have like multiple things we could uh, uh, you know one of them can be oh this is about the new place and what I think about it uh, and then we can drive somewhere else and do a voiceover about uh, uh, the new car that I got or or this or that or the other we many ideas can be had. With that, uh, but I will I will answer these questions specifically in Far Lands Bus. So worry not if you if you're not interested in vlogs and you're not subscribed to Kurt Indeed, uh, I'll still talk about it in, in Far Lands Bus. But that could, that could happen soon, possibly before the month month end is out even as well. I don't like I said I don't know why it just became a thing. I got it got carried away. I'm like mm, maybe I should keep it a secret for a while, and then uh, I kept it a secret for too long, and now 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 I don't know how to reveal <laughs> other than uh, anticlimactically. Everybody's gonna be kind of like oh that's it that's where we moved oh well we already guessed that or something like that so I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry wolf friends my my wild wolf friends I, I, I'm not I'm not that great at uh, maintaining the hype but anyway uh, yeah we've got just a few of those questions that's about it uh, and then they go on to ask do you oh, excuse me do you use Notepad++ or simply the stock default Windows Notepad? I just use the Windows Notepad. I used to use Notepad++, but it's it, it, it's far too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much for what I need. I used to use it for, you know, it was really handy when coding, uh, HTML, and stuff like that. Uh, if you didn't have, you know... I, I know I shouldn't, but I really like coding HTML in Dreamweaver. Just because it auto-completes a lot of stuff. You can start typing a, a, a tag or a style or whatever, and it'll like pop up the list, and you can just hit enter. Yes, that's what I want, that's what I want. So it just becomes like a lot of shortcuts. So I just got used to... I don't use the visual editor. Good good gravy, no, I don't use the visual editor to, to, to make websites, but uh, I just use it as my kind of HTML, uh, CSS code editor. Uh, but uh, Notepad++ has similar things, but not really the, the auto-complete function. As far as I remember, it like colors and highlights tags which helps but uh, but no I'm just using the the old notepad normal Windows notepad I am uh, rather vanilla in that regard you know speaking of speaking of vanilla what oh I was about to say we haven't seen any uh, this entire season we've yet to see any uh, spawners <laughs> just as I think I hear one beneath the surface but the rule goes that we don't in order to, to stop wasting time uh, and getting distracted and putting ourselves in danger needlessly, we don't we don't explore or seek out mob spawners, dungeons that aren't visible from the surface. Uh, that one I heard some zombies, so it could have been a spawner, but since I didn't see any of that mossy cobblestone or cobblestone or anything, uh, we're not going to uh, we're not going to bother with it. Oh, Wolfie is taking a long way to to swim here. Have, have a seat. Nope. Up. All the way up. Come on now. Come on. All the way. There we go. And perfect. All right. Let's dig in for the final hidey hole of the episode. Hopefully there's not a whole bunch of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whoops. That's not how you do that. Oh, now I've created... Ah, well. Uh, lava. Hopefully there's not a whole bunch of lava. Oh, but there is... <laughs> there is an opening above us. That's... Not right. What was that splashing I just heard? Oh, was that this? Go away. Uh, Alright, so we've got... Oops. I'm doing this all wrong. Placing blocks is becoming a little bit of a hindrance. What with the the offset in the uh, block selection box. I don't know if you've noticed. I've tried to, like, place... Last episode, I tried to, like, place torches and they weren't going where I wanted them to. And blocks uh, are a little bit... Uh, Finagly and, and finicky. We'll, we'll get used to it. We'll slowly start adapting for the offset, and then when we start playing normal Minecraft, 
uh, we'll be placing blocks wrong because in our minds we're uh, trying to counter the effects of an offset that isn't there. It'll be grand old times, and it'll make us totally lose every future UHC that we ever play. Good times indeed. Uh, let's see here. What do I need? I need the wool for the beds. And I already have two boats that I haven't used. Whoops. And there we go. All right. And I will sleep on a bed mounted on sand. So that's the way we do things here in Farlands Bust. But yeah, the first week, the first week of season six of Farlands Bust is through. This has been episode 494. Keep going to farlandsbust.com to keep donating to Child's Play charity, get us closer to that $60,000 goal. A great cause, as as I've as I've oft declared throughout the many years of supporting them here in Farlands Busts. And the next episode will be Tuesday. We're doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, remember? And yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching and listening. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. <sighs>